In this lecture, we are going to talk about the arguments for the do x methods we are going to use to handle different types of HTTP requests. We'll see what and how are they used and what methods we have to manipulate them. HTTP servlet request is an interface which objects represent an actual HTTP request sent from a client. The servlet container creates a HTTP servlet request instance and passes it as an argument to the servlet's do x methods. Very important thing to remember is that the HTTP servlet request provided to the respective do x method contains all the data that is sent from the client as a request. That said, we can acquire the HTTP method used for the request, the HTTP headers, we can get all their names or the value for a specified name. We can get the body as an input stream or reader from which it can be read. We can read the URL parameters if present. We can get a map instance representing them, a list containing only the values or names, or we can get a single parameter value by name. The URL itself, which was used to send the request, the size and type of the request. I am not really sure if you know what an URL parameter is, so I have prepared a video where I explain that. HTTP servlet request extends servlet request, from which some of the functionality comes. HTTP servlet request defines the following important methods that allows us to acquire information about the request that was sent from the client. We can use getContentLength that returns the size in bytes of the request body, or minus one if it's unknown. We can use getInputStream to retrieve the body of the request as a binary data that can be read from the servlet input stream returned from the method. We can use getParameterMap that returns a map instance of the parameters for this request. Then we can use getParameterNames that returns an enumeration of type string containing the names of the parameters for this request. We can use getParameterValues that returns an array of type string containing the values for the parameters of this request or null if no parameters. We can use getParameter that returns the value for the specified parameter or null if the parameter doesn't exist. We can use getHeader that again takes an argument of type string and returns the value of the specified header as string or null if the header is not present. We can use getHeaderNames that returns an enumeration of all the header names for this request. Get method returns a string representing the HT method used for this request. GetReader retrieves the body of the request as character data that can be read from the buffered stream instance returned. GetRequestURL returns the URL the client used to make the request. It contains the protocol, server name, port and server path, but it doesn't include any parameters. The return type is string buffer. There are more methods, but we'll stick to those one, as I believe they are quite enough for now. Let's continue with HTTP servlet response, which is an interface which objects represent an actual HTTP response that should be returned to the client based on a particular request. The servlet container creates an HTTP servlet response instance and passes it to the servlet's do x methods. Through an instance of HTTP response, we can model the actual response returned to the client. We can set the HTTP headers, adding additional key value pairs. We can also acquire the already set ones or check if a header is present. We can specify the body that should be returned in the response using an instance of output stream or print writer that we can acquire from the HTTP servlet response instance. We can set the status code that should be present for the response. If the status code is some kind of an error, 
we can even specify the message returned. HTTP Servlet Response extends Servlet Response, from which some of the functionality comes. Now, HTTP Servlet Response defines the following important methods that allows us to model the response returned to the client upon a received request. Add header takes an argument of type string and another argument of type string and adds a response header with the given name and value. Contains header returns true, taking an argument of type string. And the boolean indicates whether the response header has already been set. Get output stream returns a servlet output stream suitable for writing binary data in the response body. Get header returns string, again taking an argument of type string. The string return is the value of the header for this response or no if the header is not present. We can get a collection of type string with the header names using get header names. The get writer method returns a print writer suitable for writing character data in the response's body. Get status gets the current status code of this response as an int. We have two different versions of the send error method. One takes a single argument of type int specifying the status code. The other one specifies the status code and the message. This method again is called if some error is present on the server side and it sends it back to the client. Set status can be used to set the status code for this response. The set header method uses two arguments of type string and sets a response header for the specified name and value. If the header is already present, the new value overrides the previous one. Just like in HTTP servlet request, there are more methods that I'm not showing you here, but you can feel free to browse through the Java doc for something important that I might have not presented. That was all for this video. For more details, check the link in the description. Learn with Wits Labs. Success certified.